Welcome to the Make Vegas Pay podcast presented by MVP Consulting. It's Friday, January 27th, and we have a couple of topics to talk about today. One being it's Championship Sunday in the NFL. We're going to give our previews on that. But before we get into that, we are going to recap some of the divisional round games, some of the bets we made, some of the good things about it, some of the bad things, but also... The MVP team was in Vegas this last weekend, so we're going to squeeze in a little bit of a story time there. But before we get into that, you guys might be uh, seeing a new face here on the pod. I'd like to introduce you to Matt. Matt actually used to be one of our uh, customers a few months ago, really new to the team now. Something inside of him sparked a passion that he wanted to be a part of the team, and he's been great ever since. So I want to actually pass it to Matt right now. How did you find MVP Consulting and, like, what made you kind of just jump and want to be a part of the team? So it was, I think, week two of the NFL season. And it was a Thursday night football game with uh, Chargers Chiefs. First, like, you know, legit rivalry matchup, Thursday night football game. Pumped at work on my on my lunch break looking at TikTok. And I see just Blaze face pop up on my For You page. And uh, it's like, you know, some bold statement like, do you want to know how I can guarantee you profit on tonight's game? And Right then and there, of course, I'm going to watch the rest of the video. And uh, what he said was going to happen is exactly what happened in the game that night. So you gained a follower in me. I started commenting, joined the Telegram, and uh, just kind of all snowballed into getting more and more involved with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's been hype. You are the Red Bull Vodka Don of the team, man. We're happy to have <laughs> you on board. and happy to Proved his net worth in uh, Vegas there. <laughs> Exactly. And for the listeners, you guys might be wondering where Blay is right now. Blay couldn't make it to the pod this week, but he's currently in the lab trying to cook up some nice picks and some great analysis for you guys here this upcoming week. But let's get into story time, guys. So the team flew into Vegas, have to say, Saturday morning uh, for the divisional rounds. Crazy. I It was freezing in Vegas, first of all. I thought it was like a fever dream because the first thing I do is I walk into the Rainforest Cafe right there on the, oh, on the Las God. Vegas Strip, <laughs> and I just see Swice handicapping from the Rainforest Cafe. So let's start there, man. Oh, man. Well, we tried to go to this, like, buffet at Cosmo with the book we were at for the two days. We got hooked up with, like, first row there. If you guys have seen our videos, it was great. Uh, but we're, we get there, and we're like, well, you know, where are we going to eat? So – uh, or one of our other partners, he finds this, like, I don't even remember what it was, some breakfast place inside the Cosmo, fully booked. Every place, like, a line, like, beyond, like Disney line size. So I'm, like, put in this address for, like, this diner, and we're, like, pulling up on time here. And then the Rainforest Cafe, like, just showed up in our pocket. When we get there, I'm sitting in there for, like, 15 minutes, and these freaking like apes and like the lights start like going on and off like every apparently like 15, 20 minutes. The breakfast was like not great. The guy was super annoying who was like asking us questions about it. Who to, who to bet? Of course, we told him and this other waiter or everybody this weekend we told about on the Cowboys, which screwed us. Um, but man, the goddamn Rainforest Cafe, not a place to handicap. We actually had a great Saturday, so I wish we kind of went back Sunday because that was rough. But uh, I know you were both there and that was the. Uh, uh, I might never go back. I, I don't know. Yeah, Matt, tell us, like, your impression of the Rainforest Cafe, because that was just <laughs> nuts walking into it. No, I mean, you know, I, I really hadn't known Simon or, you know, the other partners, Zoran, all that much. And, uh, you know, I met them quickly on Thanksgiving Eve, but we were all not Locked in the right out. state of mind. <laughs> you know, that was late, I, bro. I, I, I meet him at 6 a.m. on a flight to Vegas, and, and all of a sudden, I'm like, the whole time, I just kept saying, I'm so pumped to watch Simon, like, handicapped, like, you know, dude's nasty with it. I see him up units all the time, and I sit down, and I just see him pull out his little Google Chromebook, and he's handicapping from the Rainforest Cafe with apes pounding their chest and lights, and I was like, what the fuck? Was the fucking waiter just keeps coming around, like, bothering us about, like, what we do and stuff. I'm like, man, we got games in two hours. I'm trying to cap here. <laughs> um but i mean it was it was funny it, it was a good memory like it's gonna be something that you know we're joking about now on the podcast we're gonna joke about it for as long as you know we're together it's uh you know it's just it, it was hysterical watching him do his thing and get in the lab and literally lock in as there's a thunderstorm going on behind him oh my god 
God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Matt, you were even asking me, I, I think the week before, you're like, oh, I can't wait to see Swice and Blade just handicap. And then you just <laughs> see them handicapping from the Rainforest Cafe. They did a pretty good job that Saturday. I mean, overall, with the NFL games, I'd say it was a crappy divisional round weekend. I, I'm sure you guys would agree. But yep. uh, before I get into how crappy some of the games were or how cool some of those were. I'd like to thank our partners for getting us set up at the Cosmo Sportsbook front row and everything. It was a great time, really helped us handicap the best there. But if there's a core memory, that's a core memory of this fever dream that was Vegas this weekend, it definitely had to be the Jags covering back door. I mean, the whole sports book was just on the edge of their feet or the edge of their the only feet time all waiting weekend. for that to cover. The one time that there was something good that happened. Yeah, that's the game we stumble into. I'm like, all right, we're chilling here. I know you guys put out the signal, uh, the Chiefs winning margin 1 to 10 or 1 to 9. What made you guys want to put that signal out for some of our customers, your clients? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, first of all, the winning margin. So, like, FanDuel's really my favorite book in terms of betting. They offer 1 to 10. So, if we had had FanDuel, like, Matt, we would have been freaking in good shape. Also, going on FanDuel. At 6 a.m. on the flight to Jersey, I threw in, like, That's every right. game to go to overtime, like, 50 bucks each, which didn't hit. Um, but going back to this, yeah, so the game is at, um, what's it called? Jags are down by 10, and we need them to get well, – the spread was 9.5, so everybody needed them if they took the spread. We just had the Chiefs at 1-9 to nine at, like, plus 180 instead of a normal minus 110 spread. So, uh yeah, we were just waiting for Trevor to drive down the field, and they had, like, the clock situation where they, you know, were in range and wanted to onside kick to get the ball back. So, um, Andres, got to give you props for recording that crazy video. It, it, you guys will see me get pretty hype with Matt, Brandon, our whole team there. Um, really only great, like, sports betting moment of the weekend. Um, so glad everybody was able to cash in on that, you know, Chiefs 1-9. to nine and, and we also had uh, – Chiefs and Eagles in a two-team teaser for two units. That was one of our big plays of the probably our biggest play of the weekend in terms of units for one play. So that cashed, even though both games weren't that great. Yeah, it was sick. I remember getting the uh, the live signal since I was right next to you guys. Anyway, I put that bet in. I didn't even waste any time, and I was just sitting there for waiting for the back door. And of course, you know, you see Doug Peterson. He's like, you know what? We're just gonna try to kick it here and then go for the onside. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, this is what we need. The field goal to go in. I get my camera ready, and again, the rest is history. You can check out that video on our TikTok at Make Vegas Pay. But it was definitely sweet. But that, you know, that was our time at the sports book, you know, outside of the sports book, we did meet some pretty interesting people. One of them being uh, Robert Herjavec from Shark Tank. <laughs> you know, we finished up dinner and we're just walking out, you know, on the Bellagio floor. And then I just see Robert Herjavec with some, you know, some, his lady, you know, a, a nice blonde, very attractive. We're just walking out. I'm like, Holy <laughs> crap, that's the guy from Shark Tank. And Blay, he decides to go over and I wish he was on here to tell this story. Ends up trying to talk to Robert, gets to shake his hand, and then Robert's lady just hands him a cigarette. <laughs> it's like, all right, you have a you have a nice night, basically telling him like, here you go. So we're smoking on that Robert pack this weekend. Uh, as we went into <laughs> I it. saw him on Shark Tank last night on my flight home, and I'm like, man, we should have got pitched that man. We just had our like meeting with everybody, steak dinner, and then we see him. It's like a sign of good luck for us for this year. He's great though. <laughs> he's, he's he's great on Shark Tank. Love Shark Tank. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. And then uh, I guess Blay met his, I don't know, his long lost father at the sports book too. You know, day two on Sunday, big dude walks walks in um, and Blay just starts chopping it up. This dude is a big uh, sports handicapper there. You guys know him by the name of Stefan Kutzman. You guys can see him online. He's been on Sports Center, ESPN. But yeah, he was just FaceTiming Joe Montana while we were at the book, and it was a great time. Blay was just chopping it up, but we got this great photo of both of them looking like a father and son. <laughs> I was, on like I was so time. happy I got that photo. That's fucking <laughs> made the weekend. Jeez, but yeah, I mean, we had a rough Sunday betting wise, but again, it was even tougher at some of the blackjack tables. You know, I, I was at the blackjack table dealer showing a two. I got a pair of eights. I decided to split those. Another pair of eights, split that, end up with like 18s, and then I lose by a 19 to the dealer. So I'm like, nothing I could do there. That's just part of the game. Monahan, I know you had a 
couple of bad hands at blackjack. You were up. Monaghan. It's Monaghan. Yeah, not I Monaghan. mean, it was. <laughs> I know. I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I, I'm glad. I learned that this weekend. So. <laughs> no, G is silent. But uh, no, I mean, started off the night hot on a heater uh, at the blackjack table, and uh, you know, just didn't want to end you know, my night within the first thirty minutes of gambling. And you damn well know that the longer you stay gambling in Vegas, the easier it is for uh, Vegas to get the best of you. So that all that money that I did win quickly went away. <laughs> It's all right. You're betting your winnings. We we kind of went out a little bit above even there. Slice, you get a chance to hit the tables while you're there. Uh, not too much on the on the tables. Mostly at the the sports book there, but did do some roulette, a little bit of uh, roulette, and that was kind of it. Got to see Caesar sports book as well, um, which was cool. And paid Matt and I paid ten dollars for the greasiest slice of pizza I've ever had in my life. So that was also <laughs> vile. Um, <laughs> But that's Vegas for you. Ten dollar slices there. So that's Vegas. Open container. We just hop over to the CVS. Just buy a couple. The goddamn CVS. CVS, the CVS was goaded. CVS was is fucking goaded. Yeah, no, I agree, close. man. I agree. But one thing that sucked about Vegas, it was freezing, freezing this weekend. Even just trying to walk around. Yeah, after, especially after you get soaked by the Bellagio fountains. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. That was that was a tough one there. But, yeah, that's our story time in Vegas. You guys have anything you guys want to throw in there? Anything you guys remember? No, nope, uh, we'll talk more about the games. Yeah. All right, looks like we're embarrassed to talk about more of our time in Vegas. So now we're going to jump into a recap of some of our NFL divisional round picks here. And before we do, just want to jump into this. You're listening to the Make Vegas Pay podcast presented by MVP Consulting. Us at MVP Consulting, we specialize in live betting, hedging signals, and more so getting the most value out of your bankroll in the long term. If you want to learn more about sports betting and kind of how you can become a better sports better, join our free Telegram. Link will be in the description in the video below. So let's jump into some of these divisional round picks here. The games, the game sucked aside from the maybe Chiefs Jaguars game, but we'll start there. It was uh, Chiefs Jaguars. Um, a lot went on in that game. You had the ankle injury by Mahomes. You had Chad Henney coming in here. Henney thing is possible, throwing the touchdown to Travis Kelsey, who hasn't seen a touchdown in weeks. Um, and, of course, the backdoor cover there. So, Swice, what did you see in that game? What did you like? What did you dislike? Yeah, so Kelsey, I mean, we were on that earlier in the week. I had been talking about it. He hadn't had a touchdown since November, so got his. Also cashed first touchdown score. Had a, just a hell of a game overall. Wish I had gotten more bets in on him. Uh, but, yeah, Mahomes goes down early, played through it. Um, Doug Peterson, great coach. Jags will be back. But the game was, like, not as close as it ended up to be with seven. It was really, like, a double-digit game. Jags are still getting there. Um, it was nice to see the Chiefs, like, come together as a team. And it's kind of call plays a little differently with Henny there. Um, they're able to adjust. I mean, I've seen him in a playoff game against the Browns. But, yeah, I liked what I saw from – from the Chiefs, the Jags are a good team, but as I had said in last week's podcast, I mean, they're barely beating, you know, Josh Dobbs and and a shitty coach and Brandon Staley. So it was it, it was their time to come to an end, and they should be back into the divisional next year, maybe the conference championship. They're kind of like the trajectory of the Bengals, just a little further behind them. Yeah, you could really see, you know, the difference that, uh, Doug Peterson has made in Jacksonville but with this game just looking at the eye test again it was a little bit sloppy for the Chiefs there you know they had the uh, the bye week uh, the week previous so just to jump into like a hot ready like Jaguars team that was ready for anything again was kind of tight but with that Mahomes injury everyone's watching the ankle this week I've seen some videos where he's looking good but I'm not entirely sold on the ankle but that line between the Chiefs and Bengals is moving a lot it's almost nauseating We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But, again, Kansas City moves on. Uh, Jags covered. And, again, we were able to sneak in that 1-9 to nine winning margin for the Chiefs. So, again, that was good there. Uh, moving on to the game later that evening was the Giants-Eagles game. Um, what the blowout. fuck was that? Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Uh, it, was, it, it was a blowout. Uh, the Giants looked like they sucked. The Eagles looked good. Swice will pass it over to you there. You know, what did you like from this game? What did you dislike? 
Well, I mean, it was over at halftime, so Matt and I are sitting there sweating out our teaser with, like, over 35 or whatever total points that ended 38. up being. 38. Yeah, Kenneth Gainwell won somebody a lot of money on that, like, last touchdown. But, um, no, I was wrong about this game. I thought Eagles would be tough for them to beat the Giants three times in a row. Didn't actually send out a play on this game other than the Eagles with the Chiefs and that teaser, so both of them to win there. Um, but, yeah, I mean – Giants, they're coached well, but there's their lack of talent really kind of screwed them there. I don't know if they should keep Daniel Jones. Uh, they played a hell of a game against the Vikings, so we'll see if they're in the playoffs next year. And then the Eagles, I mean, I already knew about where they were dominant and what they were good at, but we'll get more into that in a little bit. But, I mean, they played a complete game on offense and defense. Their O-line is sick. Um, Miles Sanders had a great game on the ground. Hurts played well. Like they just played a complete game and kind of ran with it from start to finish. So just terrible game to like go to the book and like the first day of the games are really like both double digit games, which which absolutely sucked. Yeah, well, it was a blowout. But I mean, you have a, a coach, a great coach like Brian Dable, who was able to really turn the Giants team around, bring him into the playoffs, get a playoff win. Um, and then for them to just face a Philadelphia Eagles team that looked prepared, looked like Nick Sirianni just knew what he was doing. He coached well. Yeah, and they, I think they looked good all season. You know, Nick Sirianni likes to be a dick and just, you know, go for two here while he's up by, like, 30 or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Matt, you know, your thoughts on this game. What would you like? What would you dislike? Uh, well, to be blunt, I liked the Giants losing. Coming from a Patriots fan who uh, was born in 2001, my childhood was ruined by two Giants Super Bowls. So uh, whenever they lose, especially living in Jersey – I love to see a Giants loss. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I mean, slices from Jersey as well. So just seeing some sad Giants fans always always helps me out. Um, from a games per sec- game perspective, I mean, the game sucked. It was a blowout. The only reason that, that Simon and I stayed in the sports book as late as we did was to sweat out that teaser. And boy, we're literally we're the only ones that are watching. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> watching Kenneth Gainwell just friggin' separate himself from the rest of the pack. And we're, we're screaming, getting to watch him score. But, um, you know, it, I saw Simon going back to what you said about Daniel Jones and next year, I, I saw a report today, a little off topic, but I saw a report today that he, he could command somewhere around 30 to 35 million, you know, a year next uh, in, in this coming contract talk, which is wild to me for Daniel Jones. Um, but as much as I, you know, bias, as much bias as there is, Giants are on the right move, on the right, on the right uh, way, and I think that they found, I think they found that they team. found their they found their coach. We know exactly. that exactly, and they've been coach hunting forever. So we'll see. I, I I think the Eagles are you know primed and ready. They're in win now mode, and uh, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting Sunday to see them go up against the Niners. Hell yeah, we're all ready for that. So. You know, now, now that we got the Saturday games done with and recaps, let's jump over to what the games looked like on Sunday, starting off with the Bengals-Bills game there. Um, I mean, you could always just say that Joe Burrow was looking nice. I mean, he was Joe Cool throughout that game. The Bengals team overall was looking crisp. I mean, he was like 100% on completion percentage for his first drive down the field. Bills made it look a little bit too easy, but again, the Bills had their injuries. And overall, I mean, do the Bills suck, or were they just victims of too many injuries down the road? So, Simon, what did you like from that game? What did you dislike? And also give us a little bit of a perspective about some of the bets that you put there um, as well. Yeah, so this one was interesting because during the podcast, we were all in on the Bengals. Um, I talked about how the Bills had played terrible against Miami. I had said that that morning, was hung over that morning, which sucked. Uh, but we took the Bills winning margin 1-10 to 10, and then 1-6 to six live. Um, I just got to say about the Bengals, man. I mean, Joe, cool. that guy is, never is under pressure. Zach Taylor's coaching a hell of a job on offense, but also Lou Aaron, whatever his name is, the defensive coordinator of Cincinnati did a hell of a job. I mean, these guys are fired up. I'm listening to like Mike Hilton and just like T Higgins on inside the NFL. And these guys are just like yelling burrow head and just like hype the whole game, even till the end. Um, so hell of a complete game there. Didn't look phased at all. It was the snow for the Bills, and we thought it was going to be not a 17-point game. We even took a hedge of Bengals two units live, we, or Bills, excuse me, because we thought they weren't going to lose by over 10 points, um, which didn't happen. But the Bills have a lot of issues. They, as you can see, there's only one offensive head coach, or no, 
he was the only defensive head coach left. There's no more. There's only offensive head coaches. So, I mean, they just have – they're very Josh Allen reliant. Um, the defense did not play well. And the Bengals with their O-line, like, banged up, were pushing them – like, beating the shit out of them, like, pushing them back on the line. So, hell of a job by the coaching staff of the Bengals, especially that O-line uh, with three backups. You can't ask for more than that. Yeah, and, and I mean, they were looking just so crisp against the Bills. I couldn't even believe it. It's in Buffalo. It starts snowing. We're thinking we're going to get a great game from both sides. But, Swice, uh, prior to that game, one of the um, opening bets that you wanted to place was a Bills winning margin 1-10. to 10. What did you see on that? And then you also decided to hedge with the Bengals' 1-10 uh, to 10 winning margin as well. And I know you stand by it. You stick with your guns, and, you, you know, you went through with those bets. Just give our listeners an idea of like, you know, when, when you're watching the game in real time, what's going through your head to see those signals and, and go through with it? Yeah, so the Bills, first of all, were super sharp. The line had shifted during the week. It, it was the right side to be on. Um, Bengals got off to that hot start. But, um, yeah, I mean, what was in my head is like, these are two of the best teams in the league. This is – you know, based off historical data and where how many points they score and the Bills at home. Like, I don't remember the last time they've been lost by, you know, over double digits at home. So we we thought it was the right play at the time. I wanted to hedge and unfortunately just lost extra units uh, for the clients, which I'm pretty pissed about and for myself. But, you know, sometimes that'll happen where you get – four divisional games that suck. And for the first time since 1990, every single game went to the under. So just, it sucks that we were in Vegas during it and this happened, but the Bills have a lot of issues that they need to figure out, um, especially for our clients losing the money. So do better, Buffalo. For tomorrow, yeah. too, especially. <laughs> yeah, got to keep those games close. It was wild to watch. You know, Matt, what did you see from the Bengals-Bills game? What did you like? What did you dislike? Um. To be honest, I just saw a really flat Buffalo team, which no one expected, especially with the uh, the DeMar sighting. You know, I really thought that he would, you know, spark the entire team and, and crowd, which he did, but uh, it didn't translate to their on-field play. Um, I saw, like Swice said, the Bengals just dominate in all facets of the game. Um, you know, again, shout out to that O-line. They played their asses off, you know. The uh, veteran Ted Karras at center, he he balled out and he really, he really helped. Uh, I think he stuck them together. I he think did, he 100%. kept – they – I mean, they were just working as a unit. It didn't look like backups, which you no, don't see it didn't very – like, it didn't look like backups one bit. Uh, you know, Jamar Chase and, and Joe Burrow did their, you know, LSU thing, and they just balled out. And, and He's stepping know, up into saw, the pocket. Yeah. I mean, we just saw Buffalo come out flat, point blank, and just a, another bad divisional round game, which, you know, as good of the wild card round that we had, it sucks. It sucks that uh, we were in Vegas for the crappy divisional round. Yeah, yeah. And last thing I'll I'll leave on with Mr. Burrow and the line. Like, if you saw, he was catching the ball out in shotgun and then stepping into, like, his touchdowns to chase, he's stepping into that throw down the field there. Um, even with pressure, he knows how to handle it, probably as well as Mahomes at this point from what I'm seeing. So even if their O-line is banged up, we know not to ever doubt Joe Burrow again uh, because he can handle – the pressure but yeah as Matt said Buffalo just came out way too flat yeah and then just uh, again some other last words even a, a comparison to the year before where Joe Burrow had no O-line and he was getting sacked almost eight nine times a game and then to this season they start off he only got sacked and, once in that game exactly only get sacked once I only saw Buffalo make two tackles in the Bengals uh, ba uh backfield and that's it that is, that is it one of them was the sack to Burrow the other one was a running back and those are the only two tackles I saw in the backfield. Joe Mixon was running the ball like crazy, could not be stopped. But let's keep on going here. Let's not stop ourselves with that game. The final game of the NFL Divisional slate was the Cowboys 49ers. And one word to really describe that game was just defense, a defensive slugfest. Look, me being a Cowboys fan, it was very tough to watch, very tough. But again, was it a Cowboys loss? Was it a Niners win? And Brock Purdy just keeps moving along. He keeps managing the game. The Niners look good, but Swice, going to pass it over to you. You know, what are your thoughts on this game when watching it? 
Well, second year in a row when fucking Dallas just loses on some last play when Zeke's lining up, uh, and then the linebacker with he's the only lineman and he just got plowed and then they threw that stupid play. But there were some questionable calls at the end. But um, overall, I mean, Dallas lost Tony Pollard. Offense slowed down a bit. CD Lamb had a hell of a game. They have some. Their coach and quarterback are BB plus. So they're very. Get past the Niners, they keep playing them. Uh, but from a Niners perspective, like, by George Kittle, that was insane. Uh, pretty managed the game. The defense made some plays. Trent uh, or Williams, excuse me, he uh, he didn't let Parsons get through, and I think he'll be a big difference this week. But um, yeah, McCaffrey had a had his touchdown. Um, they grinded it out, and Purdy didn't make you know the mistakes like Dak did. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens this week. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, like I said, being a Cowboys fan and watching them line up for that play there, I think they should have gone for that fourth and four, I believe, with three minutes remaining in the game and just end the game there. And if they had to use the timeouts with a little turnover on downs, you know, that that's what you got to do. But you got to put some more trust into Dak. And <laughs> I mean, why are you lining there. up Zeke, Zeke by himself against the linebacker? This man's going to get plowed like – I, I just don't understand that uh, that call to the uh, what's Schultz out of bounds. Like he, I, I don't know. That was a weird ending. I was just pissed off because we had Dallas as plus four as a pick. Yeah, there there was a uh, a lot of miscues by Dallas. Undisciplined on some plays. You thought this was a team with a great defense. The defense did show out. They did show out because it was a low scoring game. But it's it's always the same thing with McCarthy and the Cowboys. Just these mistakes down, you know, down to crunch time. Making these same mistakes over and over again needs to be a coaching change. I think Dan Quinn should be the head coach, but we'll save that for the NFL preview next season. Matt, your thoughts on the Cowboys Niners game? Uh, I think Swice just uh, probably uh, relates to this more than anyone with his you know lifetime of being a Packers fan. I think that is just the most Mike McCarthy coached game we've ever seen. Um, just finds ways to, you know, put his team in, in shitty positions. Um, you know, by no means did the Cowboys play well, their defense did, but, uh, their offense, like, like he said, like Swiss said, when Pollard went down, totally changed. And, um, you know, again, just being on Cowboys plus four, uh, I think I personally sprinkled on their money line. Um, I mean, we, overtime. we were all over the Cowboys, <laughs> overtime. We were, we were all over the Cowboys and, you know, that's the other thing it was a heartbreaker for Swice and I, because personally at, you know, 5.45 in the morning on Saturday morning at Newark airport, we're, uh, we're sitting there throwing, you know, half units or whatever in on overtime and Cowboys are seven points away. They need a touchdown and we cash one of our big OT bets and they decide to uh, throw Zeke as their only lineman. So it is what it is. Uh, just Cowboys are going to Cowboy. That's that's really the only way to put it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it sounds like the consensus from the three of us. It sounds more so of a Cowboys loss rather than a Niners win. More Absolutely. to watch next weekend. And I guess that covers our recap for the NFL divisional round picks here from MVP Consulting. Before we jump into Championship Sunday, again, you're listening to the, you are listening to the Make Vegas Pay podcast presented by MVP Consulting. And I'm sure a couple of the listeners are wondering, you know, what are these guys doing with the podcast? Well, at MVP Consulting, something that we really lean on is transparency. We want you guys to listen with us through the week about some of our leans, some of our picks, and what we thought about uh, some of our picks from the week prior. And we just want to be transparent with all the listeners and everyone who follows us. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the most important part because, again, there's a lot of people in this industry that will kind of delete videos and we'll put stuff away. But we're here to let you know we're right, we're right, and we're wrong, we're wrong. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't we hiding. Up. <laughs> we're, yeah, you know, we, we ain't hiding. We'll, we're there with you with taking the bets, and yeah, we're not gonna shy away from. I mean, one of my, I love Colin Coward. He does Colin Co right, Colin wrong every re week. Like he admits where he's wrong, and he's he's wrong as much as he's right. But you know, at least he admits it. So he's he's my he's my man. Love. Shout out Colin Coward. Absolutely, and then yeah, we just want to be transparent with all y'all. And uh, again, let's move on to some of these championship Sunday picks. So uh, before we do jump into some of these picks and jump to the games, I want to recap episode one where we made some Super Bowl picks here. Uh, I think one side in the NFC, especially have uh, 
favored heavily on the Niners to make the Super Bowl from that end. And then on the AFC, we were looking at the Bills, but again, the Chiefs were very close because we were not giving anything to the Bengals then. So let's see how things change here. Let's start in the NFC with the Niners at the Philadelphia Eagles here. Again, that's going to be on Sunday, the first game of the slate. So the line opened at plus one and a half. Oh, sorry. At minus one and a half, at minus one and a half Eagles. And then that line moved from minus one and a half to minus two and a half Eagles. And then the over under opened at 47. And now the over under is at 46 and a half. So minimal movement on the over under and same with the spread. Swice, what do you see from those numbers and what's your analysis going into this game? Yeah, so for both games, I mean, Vegas is expecting them to be close. We haven't got a good game in five games. I also anticipate these games to stay probably within a touchdown, if not 10 points. I don't expect a blowout here. Um, but for this game, I mean, the line set, like we were talking about the, the Bills line where it was set at. It makes sense um, where I think these teams are very evenly matched. Yes, the Eagles have an advantage at quarterback. The Niners have an advantage at head coach. I think they both, I mean, if you look at these top, like the top 10 players on each roster, the offensive line and defensive lines are fantastic. They both have skill position players. Um, so th the big thing is going to come down to like at the end of the game, because we know both of these games are going to be close, right? So is Brock Purdy in the situation where he needs to go score a touchdown in the middle of the fourth quarter, or is it Jalen Hurts? Or does Brock Purdy just need to get a field goal? That's kind of what I, I think it's going to come down to. And can, like, the defense of the Niners make a play? I see a world where um, the Eagles are driving down the field. They get to, like, the 30-yard line, and Nick Bosa makes a play, either a sack or a strip sack or maybe even an interception. They just need to put Brock Purdy in a situation where he doesn't have to go down and, you know, score a touchdown for them. And I think that's possible with the way they use Debo out of the backfield. McCaffrey, um, they got kittled on those little short passes. So – I'm leading Niners here um, and the under, but I don't make my final decisions till game day. And I don't make them, I make a lot of those decisions live. Uh, I do think there's, there's a coaching mismatch here. The Niners were also in the NFC championship game. A lot of veteran guys who have been in this spot before. I don't think they're going to be phased by the home field advantage, although it will be a big home field advantage, but like these guys look loose. You see George Kittle out there like smiling and stuff. Debo, like they even look loose today. I was watching, so I just like the vibe that they're giving off uh, as well. And then Kyle Shanahan, I don't think he'll be, you know, he'll put get Brock Purdy in the right headspace and start him off well. And if he does make a mistake, like in the first quarter or second quarter, they got veterans on their team to be like, hey man, you're, you know, we're good, we we got this. So I think he'll be fine. He's been, you know, cool headed overall, and yeah, we're just hoping for a great game here. Yeah, you could definitely see they were loose out there having a ton of fun. Um, looking at the eye test here at both of these teams, I think I'm going to lean a little bit more with the Eagles on this one. Um, but I will say that this is their first actual test this entire NFL season. I feel like they had the easiest schedule this regular season. Coming into the playoffs, they had the bye week there. They just trampled the Giants, uh, who were looking pretty good, but again, they were too much to handle uh, against the Giants there. And with the Niners looking great, I mean, you have a rookie in Brock Purdy, and he's looking good. He looks like a quarterback that's not going to go out of his way and try to turn this into his offense. He stays within the offense. He makes minimal mistakes, and he's pretty smart for doing that. He has a bunch of great weapons around him and a great defense and coaching staff to keep him propped up. But I feel like Philadelphia has just been dominating has been dominating over and over again. Again, and We'll see how much one. that line – I mean, they got Bosa and Armstead on that line. We'll see how much they, like, are, are pushing them back because Kelsey and uh, Lane Johnson and those guys, they're – I mean, they're dominant, right? Like, so it, if you really want to watch this game, look inside the trenches on, on both sides. It's going to be fascinating to see um, who can win that war – or battle, excuse me. Whoever wins that battle is going to win the war. We'll see – you'll see there – where the game's won. That's it. Absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with that because it's one in the trenches, right? And there's a kind, lot of, of kind of the opposite of the other game. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I'm leaning Philadelphia. I know you're going San Fran, but Matt, maybe you could be the tiebreaker here. Where are you leaning? And what are your thoughts on this game from what you've seen from both of these teams? 
Um, initial lean is going to be uh, definitely Philly. I think. Um, I don't think. I don't think Brock Purdy will lose you a game. I will think. Or I, That's what true. I, say, I don't think Brock Purdy will lose you a game, but I don't see him being able to win you one. And I mean, yeah, can McCaffrey or Debo or Kittle? Yeah, they could. Um, you know, Kittle's really come back onto the scene. I'd say over the last like five, six weeks, um, he kind of had a down season to be honest, but you know, he's turned back into George Kittle that we all know and love lately. But I mean, you know, when you look at Philadelphia, you know, I could see Jalen Hurts obviously winning a game for them. You could see AJ Brown obviously well, winning a game for them. That is, I forgot to bring that up, Matt. AJ, Brown, I mean, CD Lamb freaking dominated in the last exactly. game. DK Metcalf, like they are not covering. That is going to yeah. be a problem. Yeah. Especially with with an offense like the like the Eagles have, you know, um, Did I initial lean in terms of you know in terms of like betting wise, uh, I love I love an under and especially love that teased up, uh, you know, with we love to do here at, at MVP. But yeah, no, just initially re- without even you know really studying up on it, that under is really jumping out at me. You said it was at 47, 46? Yeah, right now it's at uh, forty six and a half. Yeah, I like that with those. Two I see the Niners. Games. Yeah, but they're gonna slow down the pace for Purdy. Like Definitely. you saw that last week. And and also when they played Seattle, like they just kind of went on a rampage at the end. That was like a mismatch. So this should be a slower pace there. Um, I like the winning margins here. I know I always say this, but if you can get one to nine, one to 10, like I really just don't see this game getting out of hand. Uh, I was wrong about Cincy and Buffalo, but it's, I, I don't, I mean, they're setting the spread like they are for a reason. The NFL wants close games. Uh, they'll, they'll throw some flags to make it and maybe we'll get Matt and I's overtime. We've been waiting for <laughs> Yeah, to see I, the I new overtime rules. <laughs> I, I want to see an overtime. I want to see those new rules, but, uh, let's move on to the next game before we go overtime on the uh, podcast limit. So it's the Bengals in Kansas city against the chiefs here. It's going to be the second game on championship Sunday. It, op- it opened up Chiefs minus three, and the over-under was at 52 and a half. That looks like a monster number. Right now, those lines have moved to Chiefs uh, minus one and a half, and the over-under is at 48. Swice, with that movement and just with the eye test on some of these games, what you've seen from both these teams, what's going through your mind right now? Yeah, this, this line's been bouncing. We don't really know the extent of Mahomes' injury. Uh, we also have Cincinnati right now, which I'm sure both of you. The mayor is calling out the Chiefs. They, they are all here talking about Burrowhead. I saw Chandler Jones, or not Chandler Jones, Chris Jones, excuse me, talk, you know, calling it Burrowhead even. Like, they've lost to him three times in a row. I actually rewatched uh, their game from the AFC Championship and this year, um, this week. And, they're, I mean, their last three games have been three-point like games and overtime, one of in the AFC Championship last year, they're pretty neck and neck with each other. I don't think Burrow's phased by uh, Burrowhead, if we want to fucking call it that. He's not going to be phased. Um, but I, I like this game really winning margin one to six. Like I, as long as Mahomes is out there playing, this game should be a field goal. Could be another overtime game. They're very evenly matched. I think it's tough to beat somebody like four times in a row, especially a guy like Mahomes and Andy Reid. Um, and I think the Bengals are getting a little bit cocky this week. They, again, these teams are so close. Like, this is why we like live betting, right? Because sometimes it's hard to figure out when the line is this, this tight and these teams play each other this close, who you want to bet on. Um, so I, I'm torn right now. I, I just love what I saw with the Bengals, but it's still the Chiefs. If somebody, If one of these teams gets down by a lot of points, it doesn't even matter. The Bengals were down by 11 last year. Like, let's get a fucking comeback in this game. Um, and let's get some points, a comeback, maybe an overtime. Would love to see it, but I'm still torn on who to bet. I want Cincy to win because I love Burrow right now. But you don't bet with your heart. You bet with your – if you're trying to make money. So. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the smartest way to bet there. I mean, I'm looking at this game right now, and that line is moving like a roller coaster. It, and it really comes down to Mahomes' ankle. How healthy is his ankle going to be on Sunday? You know, he's had a couple days of rest so far. We've seen videos where the ankle looks good. I'm not entirely sold on it, but it looks like some of the public is with that live move, with that line movement. But, I mean, from the eye test alone, I mean, Kansas City still looks good. If it wasn't for the ankle injury, they would have blown out the Jags. I'm being, you know, point blank 
yeah. uh, on that. And then with the Bengals, I mean, they went into Orchard Park. They went into that stadium, and they just ran all over the Bills. Bills fans were there. They were being loud in the middle of a snowstorm and everything. And the Bengals looked so crisp in their offense. Looked like nothing could go wrong for them, and they were looking good there too. So when you pair both of these teams together in Arrowhead, I am going to lean Mahomes. I am Bur- going to Burrowhead lean Burrowhead now. Oh yeah, oh Burrowhead. <laughs> well, I mean, look, it's hard to beat a team even like twice in a row, three times in a row. You're going to make it four. It's going to come down to the Chiefs doing something a little bit different here. And with a healthy Mahomes, or at least Mahomes can play through that ankle injury, we're going to see a game here. It's going to be close. This could be the overtime game of the of the uh, championship weekend. But I'm going to lean with the Kansas City Chiefs here to win it and go into the Super Bowl. They got to break that curse because there's been a lot of talk from the Bengals. You got Eli Apple talking all over Twitter about Cancun on three being the Patrick Beverly of the NFL. And then <laughs> and then you got the mayor of Cincinnati talking his shit, too. So it's going to be an interesting game. I know the Chiefs are listening and I know they want to talk their shit. So it's got to wait till Sunday. But I'm leaning Chiefs on this one. And then I'm going to pass it to Matt here for your thoughts. But Matt, before you do. I didn't get a chance to hear about your thoughts of the Chiefs Jaguars game. So touch on that and then kind of move into what your thoughts are for this AFC championship game. Um, Chiefs Jags was, you know, it was, it was kind of what I expected Chiefs Jags to be. Um, I I think even the MVP guys said, you know, Chiefs Jags would be a close one, but you know, nothing that the Chiefs can't handle. They win soundly, but I always did expect Trevor and, you know, Doug Peterson's a great coach. So, you know, he's not going to get his, you know, blown out. Um, and, you know, of course being, and, you know, the backdoor cover was also, you know, so fun to be a part of and and be on the right side of, um, but, um, you know, I think, I think we really got to take a look at the ankle. Um, I saw a video of Mahomes on the sideline of the chiefs jazz game, just like, you know, really visibly frustrated and emotionally just upset that he was getting taken out and, you know, to kind of move on into the, uh, Chiefs Bengals I I don't see how he doesn't play I mean I I you know I see him wrapping it up as much as he needs to he's gonna get whatever injections he needs I mean this dude he's he's Mahomes exactly he he will play um he's not gonna he's not gonna miss I I think I will say I think Andy Reid kind of kind of said all right it's the Jags it's it's a young team I think we can get away with not you know risking Mahomes this week and it worked out you know you never want to look ahead, but it did in their case. And I think that's what happened. But this week you can't, you can't overlook, you know, Joe Burrow and the Bengals. And, you know, like we talked about them against the Bills, you can't do it. There's nothing that phases them. Um, you know, Bill Stadium is is one of, you know, the most rocking stadiums in the league, you know, like, you know, Lincoln Financial and Philly and, and Arrowhead are the other two that really make you think like, you know, it's loud. And, you know, Burrow was SSEC, he played at Tiger Stadium. I don't think stadium's going to be an issue in terms of that. Uh, there's nothing that phases them. It's going to be a great game. Um, we hope, I mean, we haven't got a good one in a while, so let's cross our fingers before we, you know, I'd love to see it go over, just be an absolute shootout. Um, I'm with, I'm with twice. I'd love to see Burrow win. I'm a big Burrow guy. Uh, you know, I, I I love his shtick. I love his act, but I just hope that, uh, I hope that it's a good game, honestly. Yeah, same here. And I think we all do too. So it looks like, like by the consensus that, we want Kansas City to really go to the Super Bowl on the side of the AFC. And then on the NFC, we're a little bit split down the middle here with both of us, Matt and I, wanting to see the Eagles go there. And then, again, Spice leaning more. Oh, I, I want to so. see the Bengals go, but I'm, I'm rooting for the uh, – not my, my my mouth or my money tells me to, that to bet on Kansas City in this yes, game. But I, I'm yeah, going to see where put it. <laughs> so there we go. So that really recaps – or covers our NFL Championship Sunday uh, preview. So we'd like to thank everyone for listening there. And now just a couple final words from the boys here uh, for our listeners. You know, we got a great weekend coming up, but anything else you guys are looking at on the NBA, NHL slate? No, nah, I'll focus this week on, on NFL. I mean, we got March Madness around the corner, which I'm pretty pumped about. But uh, I'm glad we finally get a Sunday off after this week. Uh, last one. So I've watched like every game this year. One of the, probably the few cappers that do, cause we live bet a lot. So we have to watch all the games. It's been a hell of a long season. I'm, I feel it like these teams do right now. So I'm pretty happy that after Sunday night, I only got one more game left and then I got a, got a rest period here. So 
Just want some close games, please, NFL. Give us some freaking close games. The Brady Monday Night Football game, by the way, was the fifth game that I've been referring to as the last five have sucked. So I really expect these games to be – these are the top four teams in the NFL. We are going to get close games. Uh, if we don't, uh, I don't know. I don't even know. I, I'm not I'm not going to do the podcast next week. Both of the games are not close. <laughs> there we go. He, he's he's going to hold out a strike if the games aren't good. I mean, I'm looking forward for the NFL. I am going to keep my ears to the streets for some NBA or NHL, but – championship sunday is going to come first matt anything you're looking forward to this upcoming weekend just just the games that's that's point blank simple just the games uh pumped i like i said with you know so i said i think it's going to be two really good football games they better after the uh product that we've gotten the last few uh last five games <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been up the divisional round all year about saying we're going to Vegas for it. We got front row at the Cosmo Sportsbook, and we got one fucking backdoor cover. That's all we got all, all weekend is a backdoor cover. We didn't get one over. First time since 1990, before I was born. I was born in 94. Unreal, unreal. And it's just, you know, you lose money, but, like, when the games are shitty and you lose money, it makes it 100 times worse. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, you know, in – Juxtaposition to last week, we're now going to have front row in our own living rooms, own bedrooms, watching these games. Still going to hammer a lot of money on these teams because that's what I'm focused on. So it's hoping for a great week here, hoping for an overtime, hoping like it doesn't suck like the week before. Well, that looks like that covers episode three of the Make Vegas Pay podcast. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. If you enjoyed this and want more, subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter with the Make Vegas Pay podcast handle again thank you for listening check out our merch online at makevegaspay.com and we'll see you guys one of these baby one of these let's get it thanks for listening